Alu Akbar, Alu Akbar, Shana, I'm not going to do it. Um, God is great, God is great. There's no God but Allah, Muhammad is prophet. Come to prayer, come to prayer. All across Morocco, the Muslim call to prayer wailed into mourning. It pulled men from their beds and squashed them into mosques. It snaked between houses and down narrow alleys, was ignored by some and grunted at by jet-lagged foreigners who'd been bolted from their sleep. Even for those who didn't heed the call, it signaled the start of another day. And like a Vuvuzela at a Bafana Bafana game, Morocco just wouldn't be the same without it. What an enticing piece of writing. It paints a picture for me. I'm, it's going to drag me into the story. I'm going to read a little bit more. So they're out there. And they're the hardest thing in writing. And after title, if you get introduction wrong, well, there ain't, there ain't no next read. They don't carry on. They just go somewhere else. You get the bounce stat going up. Okay, so we kind of have a title, we can do that. We think we know how to write titles. We kind of understand that introductions are important. Now I'll just talk a little bit about storytelling. And you know, one thing that always strikes me is that when people write, they, they, that, that um, empathy for your audience is sometimes absent because they're so wrapped up in the writing, the art of their words, that they forget who they're writing for and what they want. Stuff out there is complex, so hold people's hands, explain, think the lowest common denominator. Here's just a little thing I took from National Geographic, this is an example. Whole thing, blah, 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 about the beagle, about evolution, etc. Then he goes into this, and he just says that, that phrase, well, yes and no. How friendly is that? Ah, oh, okay, he's going to, he's leaning out, he's putting a hand out to say, let, come with me. I'll, you know what, very complex thing, we're thinking about, yes and no, come, let me show you how to do People love that, and they engage with that, and they believe that you're helping them uh, navigate a story, a problem. And be descriptive, please. Putting your finger in a plug is stunning. Sunsets are not stunning. What does Mark Twain say? If you, if you take, every time you write very, replace the word very with damn, your editor will cut out the word damn, and your story will be better for it. You know, it's the same thing with these kind of things. Stunning. Be evocative. Use your senses. Um, what does it smell like? What does it taste like? What does it actually look like? What are the colors? You know, you've got all of this palette of words that you can paint with, and we come up with stunning. I mean... Try to create a portrait of place. Your audience aren't there. You know, you need to take them there. And find your voice. Um, one of the most important things you can do as a writer is find a voice. It's the way you tell stories. And a lot of people will look at that and go humorous, and they go, well, I've got to be funnier, I've got to be funnier. Um, have you ever seen the Rowan Atkinson skit where the best man comes out to do his speech at the wedding? Well, do yourself a favor. I think it'll probably be on YouTube. Go and search YouTube. Say, Rowan Atkinson, best man skit. It's hilarious, and it demonstrates like someone who's not funny trying to be funny. So don't try to be funny if you're not funny. You know, find your voice. Tell a story in the way you tell stories. Maybe that's pretty serious. But you know what? Your audience that will come to that will expect you to be serious. So, you know, it's fine. If you're a scream, drop dead funny, hey, just let go wild, you know? Don't try to be too serious, because sometimes it just doesn't work. Find who you are inside and let it go. And it's not easy to do. You're not going to do it the first time or the second time you write. It's about looking at a whole lot of other writers. It's about looking at the way you tell stories, thinking about the way you told the story to your best mate at the pub. You say, oh, that's, that's maybe how I tell stories. Oh, I should take my writing that way as well. And tell a story. You know, I, I was asked this the other day on, on, on Twitter. Um, and somebody came back saying, maybe stories are just data with soul, you know, because you can just put out the data. That's where that inverted pyramid is really challenging, because it kind of, people go, oh, well, it's just about the data. It's not just about the data, it's the way you present the data. There's lots of competition and limited attention spans, so be entertaining. Gee whiz statistics. There has been a 0.1 increase in deaths from mouse addiction this year. I'm so retweeting that. I mean, I really am. 620,000 Americans died this year because of addiction, of mouse addiction. Hey, I am tweeting that. My God, can you believe it? Something should be done. This rampant increase, I can't believe this is terrible. Well, 619,380 died last year because it's only 0.1%. Okay, gee whiz stats. 
If you want to be followed, if you want people to quote you, you kind of got to drop them out there. Um, inherently, I hate GWIS stats and I hate the way journalists use them. But I can, you, in a world where you're after people following and tweeting and quoting, you need to give them something that they can hang on. And read your writing aloud. It doesn't matter whether you're a blogger. The challenge for blogging, okay, if you take a magazine, this little animal here, that thing here, that takes a good couple of months to put together. It has a sign-off sheet about that long, and it's Cameron, copy editor, journalist, Cameron, copy editor, proofreader, journalist, proofreader, final changes, sign-off by journalist. The bloggers have to edit themselves, which is a massive challenge, and I would be, I am useless at that. I mean. And the start of it is, read your stuff aloud. It's hard to read. It doesn't come off your tongue easily. If you can't imagine standing here just wafting off your talk, your, your story, well, then it probably is going to be quite hard to read as well. People tend to read a little bit like they hear, in my opinion. And edit your work ruthlessly. You, know, you have got to sit down and you've got to look at that story and you've got, to, you've got to look at it and say, oh, that is a spelling mistake. If you're, if you're not using a, a browser that does spelling, uh, take it out, put it into Word or something, make sure it's spelled right if you're useless. You know, it, there's nothing that's worse than people who say, oh, don't worry. You can just drop it online. Oh, we'll just change it if it's wrong. It's about being ruthless about the quality of your stuff. It's the quality of your stuff that's likely to get you someone going, I like that. I'm going to tweet that story. Good heavens, you should read this awesome story about Cape Town. You know, that's what we're after because the, one of the things, as Marietta so rightly pointed out, this world has gone away from editor-controlled media to friend-controlled media. So I tend to read what my friends tell me to read, not what Cameron puts in a magazine and says, right, that's it, that's what you're reading this month, whether you like it or not. You, and if it's not excellent... And people don't pass it on. They just go, oh gosh. So there's the challenge. So what works best? Um, advice. I think people love advice in blogs. Top 10 lists, always very popular. Short stories. Don't write two and a half thousand words. It's very, very unlikely that anyone's going to get to the end of it. Unless you have a... Unless, let's take a step back on that. It's so very easy to create holy cows in this modern media world. Unless you've got a little iPad app and you are writing for iPad or, or tablet specific stuff. Yeah, then maybe there is a narrative long form media that you can send to that. Maybe you split it off from your home page and have a long form page. The point is made. Recipes work really well, believe it or not, in travel. So when you go to a place and you want to write travel about it, think to the food. Ask the person, hey, how did you cook those prawns? What, what's that secret spice you put on? Well, give me that. Ah. You know what? People respond to that massively. Quirky personal lists, like old Tyson Jobson's flying thing. So these are some of the things on our site that have been very popular recently. Passenger's Guide to Aircraft Etiquette, as I talked about. The Aquila Rhino Massacre, over 4,900 views, 1,000 shares on Facebook. Big issues, rhinos. There's a lot of emotion. That story was written beautifully. There was pictures that challenged you. You couldn't sit there and not go, I want to do something about it. And what was the easiest thing to do? Share it, damn it, share it. Uh, a South African's Guide to Misguided Tourists. Again, funny. You're like, ha you know what? Robert's having a bad day at work. This will put a smile on his face. Easy to follow, easy to share. Where can you go without a visa? Good old-fashioned information. Boom, boom, boom. People are interested in that sort of stuff. Oh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought of that. Um, and six of Cape Town's best pizza restaurants had over 2,500 views, 19 comments. Interestingly, most of them disagreeing with the choices. So it's not also, it's about that quirky personal list. As an, I mean, we, we didn't do that kind of on purpose. We just took a personal take on it. But hey, how about just a crazy list? My top waterholes in Kruger. No ways, you're bloody ridiculous. That's not a top waterhole, that's a sewer. Get them talking. Now, as an editor of a magazine, editor of a website, as a brand manager, I'm brand editor really for Getaway, there's a constant challenge. New ideas, no ideas. Well, 
how do I come up with ideas? How do, how do we have ideas? Um, I often hear people say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm short of ideas. I don't, I don't quite know what to write about. It's a big challenge. And seeing you are maybe blogging in isolation, you, you may not have something to write about today or tomorrow or whenever it is. You, you know, you've, you've got to write frequently and the pressure comes on and, and it's, it's the end of the week and I haven't written anything this week. And so you go down to the pub and you have a couple of drinks and then you think, oh, I still don't know. And then, get, and then you're seeing a therapist and... Okay, so here's a couple of things. Read, 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 read. Read magazines, read other sites, read other blogs, interact with people, and read critics. How could I adapt that to what I do? Research. Now, someone says something in passing. You're walking along the street and you just hear someone say, God, can you believe what Jacob Zoom is up to? Hmm. Let me go and find. Do the research, do the research. Because there's stories everywhere, everywhere. Observe and listen. You know, so many people walk past great stories. There was one this morning. There's a guy just cuddled up in his blankets in the city, just over there on my way to this beautiful city, this beautiful tourism thing. And I thought, yes, that's a good post called, and excuse the language, everyone, I hope you're not offended. Fuck it, man. That's what I thought. That's the post. Take a picture and write about, about that because there's a guy eking out of existence and I'm feeling disgruntled because I have to work on a Saturday morning. So, you know, there's posts everywhere. Uh, different fields, it's new ideas. What's the number one inspiration for me in Master My Stories? Anyone in my team who'd like to answer that? Anyone here? Cosmo and Women's Health. I read them religiously. I look at their covers. Um, and everyone will know that my top cover of all time, my cover line of all time, 10 things about orgasm even Cosmo didn't know about. I am so wanting to read that. I mean, I can't read it in the office because, you know, all the girls get a bit awkward. But I'm so buying that issue to go and read about what Cosmo doesn't have an orgasm. I mean, it's crazy. So, you know, just because you have that, 10 places in South Africa that even Getaway doesn't know about, or didn't know about, as they keep on pointing out to me. Hey, that's cool. So you see the jump, it's like, oh, they're doing something interesting. How do I adapt that to what I'm doing? Um, it's okay to daydream. You know, sometimes it just, you gotta get off your desk, stop what you're doing, go down to Kirstenbosch, lie on the grass, watch the clouds go by, and try and empty your head. You probably will get a post or two or a hundred out of that exercise. Because you've got your Twitter feed, you've got your Facebook feed, you've got people phoning you the whole time, you've got editors screaming, going, where am I, copy, what's going on? And you, you, you know what, sometimes you just need to take a break, get rid of all of it, and just say, what am I actually doing here? What is, what is my relevance to this whole world? Get into the total perspective void, you know? Um, refine and go with the flow. If you see other people doing things, refine a good idea, make it work for yourself. Uh, somebody once said to me in a hotel in uh, Mauritius, we were sharing the pool at the very expensive relaunch of Latusa Rock, and I was there with the Sunday Times editor from London, and he was earning a lot more than me, and it was kind of, he was used to this kind of thing, because he didn't look so impressed as I did, just sitting in the pool with my cocktail going, and he said, Cameron, there's no new business ideas, you just take a business idea that works, and you refine it slightly, and it works for you. <laughs> it's the most important thing, it's going to dictate what your audience does right there. So. Firstly, we want them to think something. So what is that final thought? What's that one thing? So here's some crazy ideas, totally made up, and it's not real. Um, but think, see how these three different examples leave you feeling slightly different. As I sat watching the black rhino move closer, a gunshot sounded in the distance. The poachers had got another one. Oh. <laughs> Suddenly a calf, so ignore, the, ignore that ending. There's another ending, potentially. Suddenly, a calf trotted out from behind her. Numbers in this reserve, at least, were increasing. Ah, that's good. And the last one, she stopped, stared uncertain, snuffling the warm afternoon air. What the future held wasn't clear, but I knew if we didn't act and fast, it would be too late. Right, that's it, I'm going to do something about this. Three very different feelings from very different endings to stories. So, the outro. Open-ended outros entice engagements because we actually want our audience to do something with that outro. So it's fun, one thing to leave them doing you know, something. We want them actually to take action. And that's all I'm prepared to say on that, and that's final. Well, okay, well, yeah, fine. Verse, it's hard to know what the right thing is. One thing for certain, everyone has a voice and has the opportunity to use it. 
uh, just silly examples, but I'm far more likely to write a comment to the second ending than I am to the first. I mean, the guy's told me, it's final, it's over, I'm not gonna debate this, you're an idiot. And the second one, hey, there's an opportunity. Anyway, there's the 10 vital tips. Uh, there's a story, not the whole story. Like, what's that story? Uh, plan, brainstorm, research, refine, research, refine, research, refine, so on. Think before you write. Work the title, maybe the only shot you get. A great blurb entices your reader to give you their time. Introduction is everything. You have to catch them by the throat the first time. Your words have rhythm, all of their own. Do not use puns, cliches, and slang. Colloquialisms are not widely understood. So fannies aren't exactly cracked up what they are you know, everywhere. Yeah. Be careful. Be friendly. It's not about the data. It's the way you tell the story. And break the rules every so often. 11 out of 10. Um, great. There's never been a worse time for publishers or a better time for writers. There's, no, there's nothing stopping anyone in this room walking out, getting 60,000 followers, and becoming one of the wealthiest bloggers in South Africa. That's a massive challenge for us who kind of dictate our whole world in, as a business out of publishing. The opportunity is there for anyone. So thank you. You can follow me on JustCam or follow us on the blog at getaway.co.za. I hope I was useful.